It's time to include infinite height generation into my Minecraft clone, where players in my voxel game can explore deeper than ever. While other voxel games like Minecraft or Vintage Story include a fixed terrain height that is customizable, I want to give the players a deeper exploration with voxel caves and other underground structures. Start by allowing the height to be infinite on the y-axis going down as you can see from example. The voxel world still has a fixed build limit as I don't want players to build far in the sky. This may change as I'm still speculating whether if this should be enabled during world creation. Furthermore, voxel cave layer should be an option to the player during world creation in my Minecraft clone. For as the player descends into the world, the levels will get hotter and hotter as the player is getting closer towards the core, making their experience more challenging as they go deeper into the Earth's crust. Next, here's the code used for generating voxel chunks at near distance, where the variable called Altitude distance is where we start iterating on the y-axis in linear motion. Then inside the third for loop, we sum the current chunk position with the iteration value as the offset. Next, last from three is statements, we don't generate the voxel chunks above the chunk height variable. Now let's see the infinite height generation based off the code that we implemented. So if we go all the way down, you can see the caves coming in and as we go down, it will continue to generate in the y-axis. As you can see, we look up, you can just keep on going down infinitely just as you were to go left or right on the surface. You can basically dig to your heart's content with infinite death in the world now. I probably will add a cap limit or an option for the players to toggle that. But I think this is really cool because now we can actually explore deeper than before. The next step to take in our Minecraft clone is generating caves with the resemblance of what they would look like in real life. I actually got the chance to visit some caves just recently where these images shown is what I'm trying to capture. Here you can see the amount of great detail that is among these large rocks through the dark caverns. While I can't probably implement as much detail from the previous images, I do have a good inspiration coming from Minecraft's cave generation. As you can see, the voxels create nice Nice open caverns with lots of detail. However, I do think Minecraft overdoes their large cavern that is way too common, for I miss the old cave generation during that beta version of Minecraft. Now, how do we generate long tunnels in our Minecraft clone? We can start by using something called 3D noise, which is 2D noise, but just with an additional dimension, where we are sampling the noise from all dimensions, creating a unique pattern similar in real life. That being said, voxel caves are generated by carving out the land in the steps that follow. First, the land is generated with some stone and air voxels, then the caves are carved right after the land was generated. At first, I had some trouble understanding this concept, but it paid off well at the end. Now let's see what we got here at the noise generation. Okay, so we have the surface. Oh my goodness, that is pretty big. What is this? Some big noise pattern I just uncovered and looks like the top of the blocks is not rendering correctly um and this too um but i don't think this is what we want kind of cool though it's like a stadium almost like huh interesting all right let's take a look at the train now okay now we have the sea level higher than the normal terrain and we have this weird noise 3d noise gradient that's happening with our voxels here and we still have that weird pattern that shows up at the bottom of the world which is pretty cool but this is not what we want but getting close all right we have the terrain back to normal which is good and we'll check out the caves underneath i think this is not what we want that is for sure obviously um but it looks kind of cool we have like this weird checker or pattern that shows up consistently. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is not what we want, but at least we fixed the surface and we'll see if we can try to fix that. All right, let's go take a look at the caves now. And okay, this is something a little bit better than before. And we're getting there. Okay. Actually, this really looks good. So all I have to do is just reverse the block types where this right here will be come air and the rest become solid 
Um, and the chunks are loading in very well. This is very good, actually. So it's keeping up with the cave generation. And I was kind of nervous about whether this will keep up, but it's doing a good job of doing that. All right, now let's see what the caves look like. All right, there we go. Now we have more like worm caves all over the place. And as you can see, I made them go up to the surface and water is not affected. Um, but I will probably fix that. I mean, you can keep on exploring these caves for a good while and they just branch off into different directions. Honestly, this is kind of resembles like a maze. But yeah, I think this is a little bit better than before. Um, I will probably tweak some stuff about it uh, maybe a little bit more bigger maybe have some dead ends it depends i think this is pretty good for now and i'm really satisfied with the result all right let's take a look at the voxel caves now i right, changed the surface terrain a little bit so it kind of pops up as you can see right here we have a cave coming in through the surface and right here we are using cellular caves where the caves are generated and connective nodes uh i find this actually more fast uh i also use the fast noise algorithm which generates this pretty quickly as you can see every single tunnel of the cave is all interconnected this is what all caves should be like sometimes you will have little openings and hangovers uh you can just go from the top and then have drop cliffs inside different caves um the terrain height again is still infinite i probably will make it either capped at some point or maybe just keep it infinite depends on what you guys want in the comments uh but right now i think these caves are looking pretty good uh i can still break and place blocks so that's really a good thing Here's the final code on how I generate voxel caves in my Minecraft clone, where I have a method called Gen Cave, which takes in the voxel chunk and some properties about it. Next, I calculate the XYZ offset and set a density value of 0.06. Lastly, we use these values to remap the noise function and check the density. If the simplex noise is less than the density, we have a cave. While there is a bit more to it, the result is quite similar to the way how Minecraft generates its cave systems. With the help of the Fast Noise 2 library, to which Finding Fortune referred me to, my voxel engine generates them very smoothly. So I noticed this bug when I was dealing with some optimizations for my engine, and as you can see, it's quite obvious in the terrain. We have like this line that goes all the way around the perimeter of the mountains or the hills and it is kind of annoying um don't get me wrong this kind of makes really good mesa biome vibes because like all the terracotta that kind of lines up in the stripe from minecraft terrain generation but for other biomes where i just want to generate seemingly hills i think this needs to be removed and hopefully an easy fix Now, as you can see, after rerunning the program, the stripe on the hills is now fixed. Basically, was that I need to check the chunks on the border when the voxel gets to the border when for the grass top and the stone layers. But that being said, it was an easy fix, and I think it looks good now with the mountains. With all finished, I decided to clean up some code and refactor the structure of my voxel engine, fixing some bugs from previous program errors and multiplayer connection issues. Turns out in my packet message decoder, the client side was causing a buffer overflow when I skipped the bytes instead of clearing them. Yeah, this was kind of a pain where each message was to be sorted in such a way for the voxel engine client to read correctly. Some other optimizations that I made to my Minecraft clone was smooth client and server communication for multiplayer, fast voxel chunk loading by direction, and optimal cave generation. More features are slowly being implemented as I continue to develop the game. Let me know in the comments below on what features I should add next towards my voxel engine. Have a good one everyone!